Hello, my name's Adam. I'm the co-founder of Breloom, which is a company in the Webflow space that has two sides to it. We have the Reloom roster, which is our agency where we build uh, Webflow websites for clients. And we have the Reloom library, which is our component library that we released in December last year that has had over 15,000 Webflow developers use it today. This is my team on the left. From the bottom left, you have Dan, my co-founder, Slater, our CTO, Josh, our head of community, and Damien, our lead product designer. Today, I'll be talking about my experience building a successful Webflow component library, that being the Reloom library, of course. This talk will be about why we built Reloom library, how we built Reloom library, including how we built uh, the components, but also how we built the Reloom library platform using a pure no-code stack. Thirdly, we'll be talking about why I think Webflow component libraries are the future. And then I'll wrap up with some best practices for incorporating uh, a Webflow component library into your next Webflow project. So who is this talk for? Well, firstly, this talk is for freelancers and agencies who offer Webflow development as a service. Secondly, it's for product teams interested in building tools in Webflow. And that's not to say building tools for the Webflow ecosystem, but any type of tool, whether it's a SaaS product, just like we have done. And thirdly, it's for in-house teams wanting to scale their company websites using a component library. So why did we build the Reloom library? Well, when we started as an agency in 2020, it was just Dan and myself at the time, and we didn't want to be an agency that provides many different services. We just wanted to provide, uh, do one thing essentially and do it really well. And so uh, what we decided to do was to just build websites. Now we took this idea even further and decided to just focus on building Webflow sites as a way to streamline our process and to be honest, just do less work. And so as an agency that provides uh, services for clients, uh, we became very focused on time management and productivity. And that's because, uh, as you know, as an agency, our time is our money. And so we got to a point where we were building a few websites per month uh, from scratch, and we realized that there were certain steps in our development process that we would repeat for each project. Uh, for example, we'd build a nav bar uh, for each project that had most of the same structure. Now, this was not a good use of our time, so we decided to compound our efforts by building reusable components. Now, these components would help us uh, start each new project with half of the development uh, already completed. And that's because with these components, we skip the step of building the structure and the layout of a website and jump straight into the styling, which was the CSS. This had huge benefits to our business. Because we were able to halve the development time per project, it enabled us to spend more time on the creative aspects of a project, such as uh, the design, the branding, the content, and the interactions and animations, which led to a stronger portfolio, which led to more sales and conversions uh, as clients visited our website. At the time of building our own components uh, internally, we were getting more involved with the Webflow community that was thriving and still is to this day. And we were learning about other agencies and freelancers that were just like us. This made us realize that what we were building uh, would not only solve a problem for us, but for an entire community that we were already tapped into. So we decided to build a product that enabled other Webflow freelancers and agencies to access our components and Reloom Library was born. So how do we build Reloom Library? Well, when we launched Reloom Library a year ago, there were a few other component libraries in the market. Most notably, there was Flowbase and System Flow. Now these libraries, they looked great and they were well-crafted. However, they took a different approach to what we had in mind. Our approach was guided by the problems we experienced as an agency, and our mission to help other Webflow agencies and freelancers complete projects faster uh, and make more money. And so this approach led to four crucial decisions when building our components. The first decision was to build components that were unstyled, that had no opinion on design. 
because from our experience working with styled components and templates, we found that they were less adaptable uh, across projects and that we would spend a significant amount of time unstyling them. We aren't trying to build components that get you 100% of the way there with all the design done from the very beginning because for us, every client is different uh, and designs do change and they should change. And so that's why our components have no opinion on design. Now, as you can see from these tweets, this is something that other freelancers really appreciate about the Reloom library, and it sort of validates this decision that we made. Now, the second decision we made was to use a strong foundational framework for class naming. At the time uh, of building the components internally, we had discovered a class naming system uh, for Webflow called Client First, which was created by the talented team at FinSuite. For those that don't know what a class naming system is, essentially it's a framework for naming classes in Webflow uh, that keeps your Webflow projects more organized and therefore more scalable. Now we adopted the client first class naming system internally uh, in our agency and found it to be hugely beneficial for us. Uh, not only did it help keep Webflow projects more organized for clients, but it streamlined our process as an agency. During the development process, we made less decisions because we were following the framework uh, and we were able to collaborate more effectively as a team. For the first time ever, I could jump into a project and pick up where another developer left off. And so when it came to building the component library and releasing this, it was a no brainer to build this uh, based on client first because of its huge benefits. But also, uh, we believe that client first would become the industry standard and therefore uh, would help with adoption as client first began to gain traction uh, in the community. I could spend the rest of this talk uh, speaking about client first, but I'm not going to. Uh, but I do recommend you check it out if you haven't already. A uh, fun fact, I actually built the first version of Realm Library, which had uh, 600 components at the time. I built it based on the beta version of uh, client first. And when FinSuite came out with the final version, I had to rebuild that whole library again, which took me a few months to do, which was painful at the time. But I think this led to a, a better component library as I was able to revisit some of the decisions I made. Now, the third decision we made was to make the library as large as possible. Our goal was simple. We wanted to build the largest component library in the world so that developers had every component that they needed. Uh, to this day, we're on a mission to build every component on the internet. We're currently at almost 1,000 components. The fourth decision we made was to build a community around Reloom Library. I wouldn't even call this an intentional decision. Uh, to be honest, this was more of an experiment. One day we decided to create a Slack channel and drive uh, people there. And we didn't really know what to expect from this. But what we did know was that the Webflow community was thriving and this might just work in our favor. Also, we were a small team. At the time of launching Reboom Library, it was just Dan and myself. And by starting the Slack channel and building a community around Reboom Library, uh, it helped us manage support more effectively as we had community members helping each other out. It also improved our product roadmap as we became closer to the people using our product uh, who provide a wealth of insights and feedback. Um, I'm able to reach out to someone in the Slack channel and just have a chat and learn more about their experience. It also provided extra value in the form of networking with other Loomers. This was the name we've given members of our community. Um, I know it sounds cheesy, but we just didn't want to call them users or customers, so we went with Loomers. Today, we have over 1,600 Loomers in our Slack community. We also wanted the community to be able to influence our roadmap. So we built a voting board in Webflow using no-code tools such as MemberStack and JetBoost, which enables uh, the community to vote on what, what they want us to build. Uh, so we made it so that each month the voting resets so that the voting is more relevant to the active users, but also more relevant to the changing environment of web design. To this day, we still release components each month based on these votes, and we call it Component Day. But for Reloom to work as we had imagined, we needed to build an experience around it that made the workflow of using components fast. Speed has always been the focus for us. This meant that we need to build a platform that helped Loomers quickly search through thousands of components and instantly add them to a Webflow project. 
So we built the Reloom library platform using Webflow and other no-code tools such as MemberStack for memberships, Airtable for our database, Jetboost for search and filtering, Noble by FinSuite to connect our Airtable database to Webflow CMS, and Attributes by FinSuite to solve some of Webflow's limitations. Now, the first version was built by me, who, by the way, has no experience uh, at all with JavaScript uh, and even code in general. I mean, before I started using Webflow, I didn't know too much about HTML and CSS. My background is in product design. Uh, I don't think I could even write a line of code to this day, but that's not the point. The point is that I was able to build something that makes money and has thousands of people using it without knowing how to code. I'm not trying to flex. That's just to show the how life-changing this technology really is. And it only makes me more excited about the future of Webflow and the no-code space. We are now lucky to have a CTO on board who can help us take Reloom Library uh, to another level. Most recently, we built uh, the Libraries feature, which is a feature that enables you to create and share your own components. And we've managed to build that app inside of Webflow with a Django backend. So for those that aren't technical like me, this essentially means we can build absolutely anything with a Webflow front end, which is pretty cool. There are a few reasons why I believe component libraries are the future. I'll start by saying that there's a lot of upside and almost no downside to building with components, in my opinion. This might sound biased, but let's see if I can convince you on that. The most obvious reason, of course, that I believe component libraries are the future is because they just save Webflow developers a significant amount of time. For example, uh, I dug up the documented hours of one of the first pages I built in Webflow, which was a home page, which took me uh, 20 hours to build. As a test, I recently built that page using components from uh, Reloom Library, and it only took me 54 minutes. That's more than 20 times faster. And yes, I'm a more experienced Webflow developer, but that's still a significant increase in productivity. Now, I'm the co-founder of Reloom, so you should probably take what I say with a grain of salt. But here's what the community has experienced. Have a look at the tweets by Michael Woods, who says, without the Reloom library, the build would have taken me about nine full work days. Using their library allowed me to build this in eight hours. That's an increase of 10x. Uh, so the time saved on development means that freelancers and agencies can spend more time on design, copy, and interactions, all the things that make Webflow an amazing tool, but also all the things that make a website stand out, which is entirely the point of designing a beautiful website. Another reason why I believe component libraries are the future is that they reduce the learning curve for beginners uh, of Webflow. We hear this a lot from our community and I have seen this firsthand with friends, family members, uh, clients, uh, and, and even team members who go from having no knowledge of Webflow to building a page in the space of a few hours. Just to caveat, this does not mean that they become Webflow experts, but just that they are able to build something that's functional and publish that to the web. Because the core structure of the components are pre-built with the best practices, a beginner can dissect the anatomy of a component uh, and derive an understanding from there. They also have the energy to focus on learning other things like the CSS and the interactions, which is the right panel of the Webflow's UI, which is where I believe Webflow shines the most. So if you are starting out in Webflow, uh, go check out the new libraries marketplace where you can begin learning uh, with components. Related to this point, by building a component library for our clients, uh, we've empowered them to take more control of their websites. Think about the marketing person or the startup founder who up until now hasn't had that level of control over their websites and now can build a page themselves with the help of a carefully designed component library. So before they might be using the editor or the CMS, but now they can craft a, a complete page themselves. So it's become our job as a Webflow developer to not only build websites for our clients, but to also build a component library that enables our clients to build websites. So it's a bit of a meta skill and it's a challenge that we've enjoyed solving and has early signs of success. This is also the hypothesis for why we built the libraries feature where you can create and share component libraries.
Lastly, building a design system using component libraries uh, enables websites to scale and grow more effectively. Many large websites are modular for a reason, as it empowers teams to make iterations more easily over time uh, that optimize the performance of a website. Now, there is this perception that if you build a website using components, the websites won't be custom. Uh, it will look the same as every other website and that ultimately this takes away the craftsmanship of design. And maybe that's the case for templates or styled components, but that's not the case for Reloom components. Here are some examples of websites built using Reloom Library and Webflow. And as you can see, they're all quite unique. Uh, you wouldn't be able to tell that they've been built using the same components. Okay, so this sounds all well and good, but you're probably now wondering, how can I start using component libraries for my next Webflow project? And what does this have to do with the libraries marketplace uh, that Webflow has launched? I'll quickly address the new libraries marketplace and then I'll wrap up with some best practices and a quick guide to getting started. So the libraries marketplace is a new distribution channel for accessing component libraries like Reloom in Webflow. So if you're interested in using components to uh, build in Webflow, uh, which if you've lasted this long, you probably are, then I recommend you keep an eye out on how that progresses. For the launch of Marketplace, Reloom has released a set of free components so that you can try them out and dabble with them. For the full experience, you can visit the Reloom Library website where you can access all of our components. Now let's jump into how you can get started with the Reloom Library today, like right now. The first thing we recommend that you do is start with a style guide. A style guide is a central place that houses all your global classes where you can control uh, the design system of your website. It is essentially creates the design system um, and is probably the most crucial step uh, of the process. Now we have provided a style guide as a clonable so you can get started in seconds. If you would like to use our components, the next step would be to learn client first or at least become more familiar with client first. Irrespective of whether you're using Reloom components or not, we do recommend to use solid class naming system like Client First, as it does keep your Webflow projects more organized. Once you have a good understanding of Client First, it's now time to use our platform to search for components, copy them, and paste them into your Webflow project. If you're using components from the library's marketplace, you can drag and drop them in the Webflow designer. We recommend you add all components you need first before you style them, as this will reduce class duplication. For those building websites for clients and wanting to provide them with a set of components, we recommend keeping a few principles in mind. The first principle is robustness. Components must be robust enough to adapt to any kind of content without breaking. So it's important that you test your components. Ease of use. Components must be easy to use by beginners. Think of your components like a product. Quality, components must be built using the highest standards of quality and best practices in web design. And consistency, components must be consistent in order to build a cohesive system. Now, the good news is that if you're using our components uh, as the base of your component library, then these principles have been built in already. Now, I hope this talk has been helpful and that the time you spent watching me is won back many times over by using Webflow component libraries like Reloom Library. You can catch me on Twitter at Adam Mura, where I share my experience building Reloom. And you can visit library.reloom.io if you wish to learn more about Reloom Library. Thank you.